What does my dog spinning in circles before he sits down have to do with Doritos? Modal action patterns and supernormal stimuli today on Psy vs. Psy. Stay tuned. You may have seen your dog circling, circling, circling before she lays down to rest. If you get up, of course, she's gonna follow you because you know, the bathroom might be dangerous. Anyway, she has to do her ritual all over again before she can lie down in that same spot on the couch. What gives? Or maybe you're drawn to this little icon down here in the corner and you're wondering what it's for. So you give it a tap and you see what happens. Today, we're talking about modal action patterns or MAPs, maps. They used to be called fixed action patterns, but we've softened that up a bit since Fixed implies that they are totally inflexible and unable to be modified. In short, a modal action pattern is a sequence of behaviors that is triggered by a specific stimulus, difficult to interrupt, and seems to be hardwired or under the control of genetic mechanisms. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there. Many behaviors we might call instinctive might fall under this definition, since they do not require specific learning to manifest. This term instinct has fallen out of favor though, in large part because it interprets behavior rather than describing it. George Barlow's term modal action pattern avoids these issues and allows for the complex developmental and genetic influences that create differences in behavior. First, let's look at a few examples, then we'll go into each of these criteria that I mentioned. Lots of these behavioral sequences occur across the animal kingdom. Baby chickens peck at spots on the ground without learning how, and a newly hatched praying mantis can reach out and grab at moving specks almost immediately. Your dog circling before lying down might be an example of a modal action pattern. A second example in dogs might be scent marking in males who will lift their leg irrespective of whether they have anything left in the tank. Dogs also sometimes wipe their feet on the ground in a stereotyped way after doing their business even on concrete or when there's nothing to cover up. Cats will scratch at the ground when they smell certain smells like coffee. Pecking the beaks of some birds will cause them to regurgitate, which is really gross, but helps their babies get food when they return to the nest. The gray lag goose has a habit of rolling its eggs back to the nest if they fall out, which makes a lot of sense until you realize that mid behavior, you can remove the egg and they'll just keep rolling the invisible egg up to the nest. A human example might be yawning. It's elicited by seeing others yawn. You don't need to learn how to do it. And it's really hard to stop a yawn once it starts. In fact, you can try fake yawning at someone until they yawn. And as soon as they start, yell, major yawn, and then see if they can stop mid yawn. You know, for science. Lots of behavioral sequences involved in the coordination of eating and drinking fall under this category. Many times, Modal action patterns are behaviors that are specific to that species and clearly promote survival and reproduction. Some modal action patterns can be fairly complex with multiple steps in the sequence. This means though, sometimes it can be hard to distinguish between modal action patterns and learned behaviors. So how can you tell the difference? One way is to take some members of the species and raise them in an environment that prevents them from demonstrating the behavior. For example, take a mouse that usually builds a burrow and raise it in an environment where it can't dig. If you then place it in a box of sand and it builds a perfect burrow like you'd expect others of its species to dig, that means it's likely to be a modal action pattern. On the contrary, if the behavior does not develop normally without an environmental input, like a songbird that needs to hear the songs of its species when it's young in order to get it right, then it's probably not a modal action pattern. Modal action patterns are how we can tell bird nests by looking at them. Robins build robin nests, swallows build swallow nests, and weaver birds build weaver nests. Now, let's turn our attention to the stimulus that produces the behavior, which is called a sign stimulus. I've already mentioned some of these, but basically there are stimuli that seem to elicit or bring about the behavior. Herring gull chicks peck at any yellow object with red stripes, which matches the pattern on their parents' bills in nature and stimulates the parents to feed them. For the gray lag geese I mentioned earlier, the sign stimulus is an oval-shaped object outside the nest. For your friend who yawned, seeing you yawn was a sign stimulus. However, this leads to an interesting question. If we're drawn to a stimulus, what would happen if you made that stimulus more intense? we could make a more than normal, 
a super normal stimulus. In fact, if you add more red stripes, the herring gull chicks will peck at that object preferentially over their parents' natural beaks. Gray lag geese will prefer to roll a giant egg up the hill other than their own. Supernormal stimuli take advantage of the modal action pattern system and exploit it to manipulate the organism's behavior. So what about supernormal stimuli in humans? Don't be so sure that we are immune to this kind of mind control. What about lipstick? It comes in lots of shades, many of which you'd never observe in the wild. But individuals can gain an advantage by using it. Ask yourself, would you get the same result if you put it on your earlobes? Red lips are a sign stimulus. The same is true for many beauty products or other things that we find attractive. We can create stimuli that are even better than we can find in nature. It's been argued that supernormal stimuli are the basis for art and aesthetics. Think about Michelangelo's David. That's a figure that can never exist in nature. Junk food is another example. Fat and salt are relatively rare in natural human forage. And biologically, it makes sense to pay special attention and be especially rewarded when you find foods that contain those things. However, now all you have to do is open a bag of Doritos to be assaulted with a flavor unlike any you might find in nature. Butter flavoring tastes more like butter than butter, and we love it. These are supernormal stimuli, exploiting preferences for these unnatural features to the point that it can actually harm your health rather than protect it. So that's the idea behind modal action patterns, behaviors we're naturally inclined to do in a certain way in certain situations. They're brought about by science stimuli, and interestingly, we can produce supernormal stimuli to get exaggerated behavior. If you found this video helpful, leave a comment. Create a new action pattern of your own by pressing the like button. Subscribe to get more of our videos on all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking. Did it work?